What's up guys, when a Chinese brand with a name that I can't even pronounce asked me to review one of their watches, I really honestly didn't think it was going to be as good as it is. In terms of homage watches, everyone has their own opinions, some people love them, some people hate them. However, with this watch in specific, yeah, even though we have seen this design a million times before, it's nothing new, it, although they do use a few cues from models such as the Tudor Black Bay as well, in regards to, for example, the teeth on the bezel and the actual shape of the bezel, which are much lower profile than the teeth on a, a Submariner bezel. I personally prefer this style of bezel, even though it's not as easy to turn. And also the crown is very similar to Tudor Black Bay with that JP on top, which I don't know what it means. The same way the logo and the name is just, you can't even pronounce it. It's obviously it stands for Bowling Watch and then the RX I guess is Rolex. But yeah, it's really weird the branding on this watch. However, however, once you get past the fact that yes, this isn't a creative watch, this isn't their own design and the branding is all over the place. What you have is a very, very high quality watch for the price. This is $239, you're getting that beautiful gradient blue dial, ceramic bezel insert with quite deep engravings for the numerals and for the markers, slightly polished edges on the case, a very nice case back once again, emulating Rolex case backs, looks classic with that logo slanted in the center. You also have a very, very nice sapphire crystal with a slight dome to it, a very, very generous application of anti-reflective coating, which as you can see, even with a light source, quite powerful light source right on top of it, it's still able to give you a lot of clarity on the actual indices. And once again, the indices are all applied with highly polished edges, the same with the Mercedes hands, highly polished, very, very nice looking. I mean, in terms of the appearance of this watch, it looks a lot more expensive than it is. It definitely doesn't look like a $239 watch. At the bottom part of the case you can see the helium escape valve because apparently you can go to depths of up to a thousand meters with this watch although I'm obviously never going to be putting that to the test. The crown is very easy to actuate because once again it is similar to the Tudor Black Bay crown and I really like that style of a crown. I think it fits perfectly with how big and rugged this watch is. You can see the slight distortion from the sapphire crystal there. I mean it's just a very, very nice looking watch. In regards to the only complaint I have, and this is really the only complaint I have, the fact that the bracelet is very poor quality. I mean, it's a very, very cheap bracelet. And at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind the price of this watch. They obviously had to cut corners somewhere and they definitely chose to cut those corners in the bracelet, which I much prefer other than them, for example, taking the ceramic bezel insert out of the watch, which is what other brands would have done because the bracelet is something I can go and change with no problem. So in terms of the actual watch, Personally, in five years collecting watches, I've never seen or held a watch for this price that offers this kind of quality, these materials, this value for money, with that Seiko NH35 movement, obviously, <laughs> no shock to anyone. So yeah, I mean, it's just really amazing. This is how the watch looks on my seven inch wrist. It is once again a very big watch, but it's not uncomfortable by any means. But yeah, for the price, it's just stunning what they have managed to do. And I could definitely, definitely recommend this watch. No doubt about it. Hope you enjoyed the review, guys. Till the next time. Peace.